from WDWNT, the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news and entertainment. This is Park Center. What's up, everyone? Happy Wednesday night. Welcome to Park Center. I'm Rob Whiteside, and with me tonight is a bunch of people. Some of them you might not know. We've got Patrick Hackett. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Jill Diffendall. Hello. Kamila. And CJ. See you, go, everyone. Yes. He did it. He brought it to the table. Uh, so CJ is new with us tonight, so everybody be nice to him in the chat. Um, also, Please. he makes a lot of cool merchandise for uh, Carousel products, so also be super nice to him in the chat. Um, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. The first thing we want to talk about is um, there are no caballeros. Did I say there are caballeros? I'm, I probably mispronounced it. But basically, um, the Grand Fiesta Tour is sans three animatronics. Not just one, not just two, but three. Um, and it's it's a sad sight to see, and it doesn't sound like they're going to be coming back anytime soon. Jill, you've written it. Is it as tragic as it looks online? Yeah, like I literally have been referring to it as an abomination. It's it's pretty <laughs> upsetting. Um, I wrote it when just Donald had been removed, and Jose and Panchito were still there, and then and that was bad. Um, especially because the entire ride is the two of them looking for Donald, and so they, he never gets found. Um, but now we have these flat wooden cutouts, and you know, if they were like standing out in World Showcase or something, they'd be cool and cute, and you'd take your picture with them. But when they're like the sort of the the end of the ride, the finale, the thing that you ride the whole ride to see at the end. Um, this is, you know, like if they just, I don't know, had a busker instead of the Shaman of Songs or something. Like it just, it, it's, it's anticlimactic and it's, it's sad. It just, but they said they're coming back. So I'm super hopeful that that is actually the case. Yeah, anybody, I mean, Patrick, you talked about this a little bit. Uh, and again, I know you've only seen it online, but it's not pretty, is it? No, it's not pretty, and I don't trust anything that's being said that they'll be back. We've heard <laughs> things like that before. I'm sure every single entertainment is coming back, too. Right, Bob? I know you're watching. Uh, it's tragic that stuff like this is happening. I understand that the parks aren't open at capacity. California is not open at all. But at least make the product that's out there be worthwhile. People are paying the same amount of money that they used to pay and going through even more trouble to get to the parks. They deserve a good show. Your, uh, all your executives are making their money. They should be making better decisions to make a better product out in the parks for your consumer. So I have a question. So they put these flats up, right? But here's a video of what it looked like before the animatronics, and there was a screen with them on it. I assume this is something that they could have put back into practice, no? <laughs> like, why the did they have to go... The, the screen isn't there anymore? Oh, no, the, I, I mean, say the screen is... Oh, okay. Well, it's it's bad. Um, so I, I just feel like the screen should should be able to, like, be put back into place if it's going to be gone for three months rather than the, the, the stand-ups? I don't know. Come all, on, the, I mean, all the people that knew the screen was there have been furloughed. <laughs> I mean, not untrue, probably. I mean, that's um, probably not a joke. Yeah. Uh, Kamala, have the you ridden this ride before? I've definitely ridden it before, never with uh, these posters um, characters. <laughs> but I, I, I think the screen looks better. I feel like bring that back because with what they currently have, you can tell something is wrong or something is missing, even if this is your first time writing. Uh, but with the screen, it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And it's closer, frankly, to what other parts of the ride are like. I, you know, this is when I kind of wish there was like a reaction show so we could see kind of more behind the scenes of some of these decisions. Um, but I do hope the original animatronics uh, or characters will be back and it doesn't take too long because this is just kind of sad. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, CJ, thoughts? Well, when they removed them and quickly put up those cardboard cutouts, I've been wondering how long they may have been planning to replace them or at least refurbish them for now because they can't just 
print copy, print copy, cut, and then toss those cardboard things up there in a night. So how long were they planning this? Probably ever since uh, Jose kicked the bucket, I would guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that's 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 just a guess. So they knew they uh, had a problem. <laughs> right. We need to come up with a solution. No, 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 not the screen. These things will do just fine. Um, yeah, it's just it's just kind of it looks like a carnival. It just looks like a straight up carnival. So sad times. So let's switch on to good times. Uh, surprise and delight. They brought back the uh, the discount for AP 30 percent for AP uh, and uh, vacation club members from February 2nd to March 2nd of 2021. This is something they've done before. They don't announce it. They just go in and do it. Um, I, I see that Jill is already rubbing her hands together. How many wishables can you get with 30% off, right? Um, yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick's sitting here just like losing his mind. Uh, I mean, you're just jealous, man, that you're not down there to take advantage of it. I told you before we came on the air, I bought a McDonald's Funko Pop because I haven't bought a collectible in a long time. I now have a McNugget in my collection. But I was just thinking, I was like, oh, 30% off. That means after the third wishable, the fourth one's kind of on the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at those prices, you're just making money. I mean, really, if you think about it that way. Yeah. Um, Does it CJ, just mean, though, that... Oh, I'm sorry, Kamala. Oh, Good. sorry. I just was thinking, like, does this mean that Disney just has a ton of merch that they need people to buy? And so they're starting with APs because, you know, it's a fun way to seem like they're doing something nice for you. But, uh, you know, hopefully eventually it'll make its way onto Shop Disney also. But I just, I mean, they've got to have a lot of merchandise that has kind of been left, especially with Disneyland closed. Um, lower number of people are visiting Disney World. I feel like that's supposed to be a part of it, right? No, they don't have any left. Tom and Jill bought it all. Um, but I would say <laughs> that, um, you know, out in California, they're, for the Legacy, they're also doing 30%. Isn't that right? For the Legacy <laughs> Pass, the pass holders? So why I opening in California is, like, think of hard-to-get holiday sippers. Those are, are, like, there's whole walls full of them. Like the Jingle Bell sipper, the green one that was, like, so hard to get – a wall full and it's just kind of a sign of the times um but I, they've got to have a backlog yeah you would think so um I'm, and then the other thing about this is that um you know with with the vacation club and the ap you bring up a great point there's a lot of people who can't get there right now and so it would make i mean if they were really up for goodwill and blowing out product you would think they would make it available on shop disney i i gotta admit i did try typing it in the old code isn't working so if there's some other code out there that you've heard of let me know i know it's sad i mean um, i will say it's, i think part of it is because attendance is low right now and they're trying to do what they can to bring in pass holders when the, the park attendance is definitely the lowest it's been in a few months since before Thanksgiving, for sure. Um, and I feel like the, the times they've done this in the past have been uh, at low attendance time. So they're trying to, I guess, make up attendance with merch or else use the merch discount to lure in pass holders. I mean, and it, probably the evidence shows that it's worked in the last times they did it. So they're doing it again. Yep. So uh, let's move on from this topic to talk about a new exhibit that they've got going on at Epcot for uh, the soul of jazz. Uh, we've got a lot of pictures about this on the website, wdwnt.com. So they've taken over this section of the American Adventure with some, a big, huge display of, of uh, kind of a salute to, to jazz in America uh, coming off of the movie Soul. I feel like this... This would have been a cooler tie-in if Soul had actually gotten to get into the movie theaters. Um, you know, I know a lot of people got to watch it on Disney Plus. I think it's a very, uh, I think it's a very cool movie, and I think this is a very cool concept. Uh, you know, to bring this to the American Adventure. Um, what do you think, Kamila? I know you've taken a look at some of this stuff. Yes, I really love that Disney is doing this. I think it is such a fun concept. It's a great tie-in with the movie Soul, um, which was really well received. A lot of people loved it. It was sad, um, but I love this. And 
you know, unfortunately, I'm not able to see it in person right now. So my first thought was, you know, well, I hope they bring it back or they bring other iterations. I saw someone said, you know, they should continue to bring different types of exhibits. But what seems really cool about this one is they've got actual artifacts from jazz legends. Uh, we have got people like Beyonce and Lee talking about um, their early jazz influences. It just is a good of the nice nod to February, which is Black History Month. Um, I feel like the question a lot of people have is how long are you going to keep it? Uh, you know, they kind of sell different uh, exhibits throughout the year. Uh, I think that would be really fun where someone said maybe next year in February they can do Motown. Um, and I thought that seemed fun. So I have the concept. I, um, it's really nice. It'd be cool if there was like some live music that came with it. Um, That's a good but point. I, it seems really cool, and I'm just very sad that I'm not able to see it in person this year. Yeah, no, for sure. So I, I, I agree. I mean, this this should be something they keep around for a while. I don't know what they would replace it with. Um, I mean, I would like to see more tie-ins like this where they make sense. So, uh, anybody? Yes, uh, and. Oh, I was just going to say, what's kind of cool is it it's a little more elevated than something they do in uh, DCA for Black History Month, which is they bring in, like, this gospel choir, which is also very, I mean, it's very fun. Um, but, so, I, you know, I like that they're thinking about kind of creating to um, bring some of this history into the parks. Uh, but, yeah. No, for sure. Uh, has anybody been to see it that's there? Like, CJ, Jill, have you guys gone to see it at all? Not yet. I haven't been to Epcot yet, but um, in in conjunction with this, they're doing a celebrate soulfully. Um, I don't want to call it an exhibit, but it's sort of like a theming in Disney Springs, where they've got an, uh, a few murals, they've got some stuff on the store windows uh, throughout World of Disney and um, Marketplace. They have some signs like in the Wonderground Gallery and Marketplace. They have um, they've pulled out and and highlighted. Uh, art within Wonderground Gallery that is done by Black artists. So, in conjunction with Black History Month, um, I, it's it's really nice. Like, I think it it's it kind of elevates uh, what you. It, it makes it feel like you're going more into a gallery in Wonderground Gallery. I think it's a really nice touch. Um, but in general, I'm just curious. Like, are they going? I, I assume the effort they put into this and have and procuring artifacts like that. Um, they'll leave that exhibit up in American Adventure well beyond February. I certainly hope they do. But I think this is, and I just love the idea of this, and I think, you know, they could rotate this uh, over the course of a year or every few months and, and bring new things in there that celebrate uh, all different types of American history and celebrate other, other cultures. Uh, it's just a great idea, and I can't wait to go see it. Very cool. Um, so going from something that's sort of more meaningful to something that's a little more meaningless, <laughs> there's a Star Wars overlay. <laughs> there's a Star Wars overlay on the Rainforest Cafe. Star Wars overlay. Is it temporary? Is it permanent? It's fantastic. Look at that. They put a net. You'd never know it was a Rainforest Cafe. Um, it's slow. Oh, my gosh. This is better than that uh, Nightmare Before Christmas overlay they do out there, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, it's uh, honestly as as crazy as all this is that it's like, oh, we're just going to make this a Star Wars store, uh, and it kind of speaks to what we were talking about earlier about them having too much merch. You know, they're going to put all this stuff in here, and they've put out Ray Speeder in front of it. Um, I, I I I'm strangely attracted to wanting to go out and see this. Um, Patrick, I mean, I know you like to to spend money on stuff like this. <laughs> Um, I think it's because they have a ton of Galaxy's Edge stuff that they need to start moving that's just sitting there on mm -hmm. shelves. And what good is an abandoned rainforest cafe doing for you? I mean, it's not a mall in Connecticut where we have one. It's, you know, prime real estate down there in downtown Disney. And you need to utilize that space. Honestly, if it stays, that's great. I think we should have less rainforest cafes in Walt Disney World. It's just How dare it's you? tacky. Oh, come on. Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex, it's, it's tchotchke crap that I'd rather have Disney-style tchotchke crap. And speaking of tchotchke crap, it'll be great to buy all your Star Wars stuff here. I think they should move a ton of stuff from Galaxy's Edge over here, and it'll help them move a lot of merch and hopefully make up some of the difference of uh, losing all that emission. 
So one little thing that I looked at that bothered me a little bit is that on this raised speeder, raised speeder is sitting on top of what they're calling on this sign a stage, but stage. it's a fountain. It's a fountain. It was supposed to be a yeah. fountain. It, it's you can see that there was places in here where it, where it used to be a fountain. I, I I don't know. It, that seems a little weird, but I mean, again, we're putting Star Wars in the middle of downtown Disney. I, I'm for it. I'm down. It's exciting. Um, anybody else want to want to take a shot at this one? I'm just I happy like that the Wonder Room Gallery is coming floor. back. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with Kamila. Sorry, I was. I, the building looks really. Cool. Um, thinking about it rethemed to Star Wars, and I hope that they make the inside something kind of special. I think that would be really nice for Disneyland fans who have been shut out of their park for a pretty much a year at this point. Um, you know, I, I hope they do something really cool with it inside to match kind of the unique outside. Yeah, I'm sorry. CJ, what's up? Oh, no, I was just going to say I'm happy Wonderground Gallery is coming back, so it's not really taking away from anything rather than a really awful restaurant, but it's bringing back something to it at the same time. Were you people hurt at the Rainforest Cafe? It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? It's animatronics in a restaurant. The, the, the volcano cake. Come on. Why do you hate on this so much? Because it's not 1997 anymore. <laughs> it is kind you of like having back. dinner. It is kind of like eating in the rainforest section of living with the land. So I appreciate it that. It is, aspect. yeah. Yikes. Uh, okay, so we'll move on to next topic. Is um, something we've talked about before is the primeval whirl. Uh, everyone's favorite attraction. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody's favorite attraction, right? I love uh, this ride. Like I actually <laughs> love this ride. Okay. That's, wow. All right. And no, I was right, let's upset uh, because so many people were joking, and I was like, "What do you like? You this ride was so fun. You could be waiting for like dinner at Yak and Yeti, and you could just go hop up like five times. There was no wait. It actually was thrilling, like, like shockingly. I had for people who really didn't know what it was and got on it because it's a little terrifying. Um, I actually really liked this ride, but I do think they could do better with this. Yeah, no, I mean, like, show that passion. However, as somebody who's, like, closer to Disneyland, Goofy Sky School is a better attraction than this one, I think. It's the same basic basic I attraction. Disagree. Really? I think Goofy Sky wow. School hurts so much. On that ride, I truly feel like uh, like uh, death is near on Goofy Sky School. <laughs> I truly feel like I will not survive. Wow, okay, all right. Uh, Patrick, rebuttal? No, I don't want to do that. Um, I, I actually had to have knee replacement surgery after riding Primeval World. <laughs> it is so rough on your knees. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, Tom Corliss actually made me enjoy this ride because when I was a, a new fan, I just kind of rode a roller coaster. I'm like, this is an off-the-shelf the coaster. There's nothing special. And then through you know communicating with WWNT in the early days and watching the shows, I found out that it's – the story of the dinosaur attraction, which is one of my favorites, told in the carnival theme. And I like that about it, but it's not running. It's an off-the-shelf coaster. There's prime real estate there. I hope it's something more than a walkway. Uh, and I, you know, will enjoy this when Fun Spot puts it back up. <laughs> sorry. Don't be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's just bad. Well, like how so? It's just I think it's corny. I think it just doesn't fit into Animal Kingdom. It's literally in a parking lot. I I just don't get it. I don't get it. Never been a fan. Well, you know what? I mean, the the this permit says that they've been approved to do work but it doesn't specifically say to tear it down but we've seen that they've taken the cars off the track they've they've started removing a pieces piece or two of the track this is pretty clearly going to be to remove this and and while i don't i never really hated this attraction i never really found much love for it either at the same time i personally like the theming of goofy sky school better um i didn't I, I i'm not sure that i felt like it was more dangerous or or anything than the uh than the one in, in uh in animal kingdom but um, I, I also know that the excavator was supposed to be here 
and that was oh. going to be a much better attraction than what we ended up with. So that that part of that makes me sad there too. Same thing like, you know, we Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is going to be fine in California where they didn't have anything, but when you gutted the great movie ride to put it there, that hurts. So I feel like the same thing. Like it could be the excavator, but it's this. So I don't know. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the Rivers of America are returning. So there is uh, there are a couple stories on our site about the Rivers of America. And for those of you who don't know, the water was drained out and is now back. And so this Friday, they're supposed to be uh, opening up the riverboat again. And then uh, Tom Sawyer's Island's rafts are, uh, are on the water again. So to me, this, this is all about the aesthetic in a lot of ways because there is a lot of real estate connected to the idea that the Rivers of America is centralized in frontier land and it's just been an eyesore at the busiest time of the year, you know, around Christmas, they had it all drained. So I'm, I'm glad they're doing a refurbishment. It seemed like a weird time to do it, but it's nice to see all this coming back, isn't it, CJ? Oh, yeah, for sure. The riverboat and even just going over to Tom Sawyer Island is always unique. Um, anytime I go over there, I find something different every time, whether it was back when they used to do the paintbrush scavenger hunt or just, you know, something like a little painted sign somewhere that was just stuck to the theming. Uh, the riverboat is always fun, very slow, very relaxing. You can just sit there and breathe for a little bit. Um, but in terms of what they were doing for the refurbishment, you know, we could only see a little bit of what they were doing with the track replacement and uh, repainting Harper's Mill and some of the uh, rock work. So I'm really interested to see what else they did on the interior, you know, back behind the trees where we couldn't see it from land. Yeah. Anybody else? I think Tom Sawyer Island should be bulldozed and put something meaningful there. I agree. I mean, we're, I agree. we're I, starting. I wasn't going to get it, but I agree. To, you know, realize the cultural sensitivity of everything, and that's long been a book at debate and its merit and all that. I'm not here to get into that. It is a giant piece of real estate in a park that could use real estate, and there's nothing on it. As someone who is terrified of snakes, it is a place I actively avoid because they could be hiding anywhere. I would have looked for that paintbrush, would have found a snake. Yeah, that would have been terrific. Way to go, Disney. But it, it's so much wasted space. Having the rivers back, um, the waterways around Walt Disney World are so important, and the kinetic energy that they bring is just wonderful. I think the the uh, Skyway added a little bit of that. No, oh, wow, the Skyway. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. It's just nice to have the kinetic energy and the water out there, but Tom Sawyer Island is, is straight garbage, and it needs to be bulldozed. I wasn't uh, going to say bulldoze. it, but literally that was my thought, is it's like, who cares? You know, what, what's the difference? Must are still going to ignore it. Have that restaurant that opens up, you know, what, a couple times a year? Right? Like, what are we doing? What are when we doing? When the moon doing? is in the fifth house. Yeah, so please keep the riverboat. We can absolutely bulldoze yes. Tom Sawyer Island. Zero, zero, zero problem with that. Uh, I can't even tell you the last time I was there. I'm actually, like, I'm going to go just because I haven't been there in such a long time, and I feel like it may indeed be um, not long for this world. Uh, although, I don't know, the fact that they just refurbed a bunch of the buildings out there maybe says otherwise, but it does certainly seem like it fits into this whole category of things Disney is trying to be more culturally sensitive about. Um, so uh, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, please keep the riverboat. I love the riverboat. I'm very excited it's coming back. I want to go ride it. Uh, it. It is like sort of one of the most uh, enjoyable, pleasant, calm, nostalgic attractions in Magic Kingdom. And I, I'm happy to, to see it come back. Very cool. Uh, all right, so let's move on to our last topic of the night, a sneak peek that we've got of Avengers Campus. And I like this title where it says, Awaiting Opening in Disney California Adventure. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's starting to shape up. It's looking good. I want to go. Let me in. Um, you know, all the, the <laughs> comparison to the, uh, the concept art looks pretty good, except, um, again, there are no people, and all these people aren't wearing masks. Um, so we've got sneak peeks here of, of some of the buildings. Uh, you can see the Stark Industries on the side of this, this building. You can see through the, through the trees a little bit, you can see the web 
uh, gift shop down here. So it's, you know, like Disney, usually does a pretty good job keeping things pretty true to the, um, to the drawings. It looks pretty exciting, and um, I, I think that we should all go. Can we go? <laughs> uh, someone in the chat earlier said Disneyland is a park that ran f from 1955 to 2020, oh. and it's really, really starting to feel that way. Uh, yeah, as soon as it's safe and Disneyland opens and we're looking at Avengers Campus, I want to be there. Um, this looks amazing. Spider-Man is one of my favorite attractions in all of Orlando, never mind at Universal. It's a great attraction. Uh, check out some of the early Universal Parks news today where we discussed uh, Superhero Island. Uh, this is going to be incredible. It looks just like the concept art. The graphics are tremendous. I can't wait to get some pictures of it at night. It's going to be such a wonderful place to spend time as soon as we can, which, you know, Hopefully soon, go get vaccinated and, and be part of the solution. Um, well, you are the invincible one on our panel tonight. I am. I just got my second dose today. And look at me. I'm still here. I'm smiling. I'm moving all everything. I, not, not that arm so much. Um, but I feel great. It's, uh, it's really, really awesome because I'm looking forward to being at Disney World to celebrate my 40th in November. Nice. Um, and, and Kamila, any thoughts about this one? Again, um, I'm, have you have you seen any of the of the like of it coming out of the ground at any time? Or you know, I really, I mean, the only thing I remember is for the longest time, and up until the park closed, uh, it was really difficult to get to um, the Guardians of the Galaxy ride uh, because of the construction. But they really did a good job. I feel like of. Uh, you know, besides definitely not having an easy way to access that ride, of kind of hiding the rest of it. So I don't know that I've seen any of this, but I feel like the more that leaks out, um, you know, it's definitely piquing my interest. Um, I'll be really curious to just when we can finally see it kind of all put together. Um, and then also, it just hurts to see the Guardians of the Galaxy ride in those pictures that is one face, and truly I miss it. Yep. Here it is. You can't go, but here it is. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I mean, uh, yeah, I just, I can't wait to go back. I don't know when that's going to be. It feels like it gets further and further away all the time. Uh, Patrick, the joke about, you know, until 2020. I mean, it's, it's, we're a month away of, of, from this have been a whole year of Disneyland closed. And I don't, did any of us see that coming? That's crazy. And then meanwhile, they're, I don't know, they're, partying it up in Florida. So, good for that. <laughs> um, so, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank Brian Layton, uh, Coach Layton, for this hat. I appreciate it. He sent this out. Uh, and also tell you guys that, um, you know, we're still selling uh, cast member shirts to raise money for the cast pantry. This one uh, went on sale today. Uh, we've sold out uh, over half of them already. So, thank you guys. To anybody who bought one, all the uh, proceeds go to the cast pantry. So thank you guys for doing that. Uh, also want to give a big shout out to our wigs. And uh, Jill, do you want to say a little bit about our wigs program? Sure thing. Uh, wigs is our uh, members subscription program. Uh, you can join for as little as $2 a month over at uh, www.patreon.com slash WDWNT. Uh, you get access to all kinds of cool extra content that uh, other people don't get. Uh, you get uh, post shows for this show and WDW Days Tonight. You get access to our uh, wigs only Discord server, so you can hang out and chat with other wigs and staff pop in there pretty much every day chatting with people. Um, you get uh, some members of wigs get core bucks depending on how much they uh, contribute at what level. Uh, there are other wigs exclusive shows like Detailed with Tom Corliss, and uh, we're going to be rolling out some more wigs benefits in the coming months, so stay tuned. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thanks, uh, CJ. Great job tonight. We appreciate you. Um, and uh, if you are a WIGS member, we will see you in the post show. Uh, but if you are not, we will see you next Wednesday. Thanks a lot, guys.
Patrick, will you sing a song for us? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. 